You need a home server, you didn't even know that. But you do, you totally do. And I'm going to show you something from Thekus that I think will be a good fit for you. Now, so we've taken a look at some different stuff from Thekus in the past. This is a little bit different. Uh, you guys probably know, or maybe not if you're just tuning in, I'm a really big fan of Linux. I love open source. I love being in full control of my stuff. I think it works really well. I think it works really well for most people. Uh, it does require a little bit more tinkering. I like tinkering. doesn't really bother me. It gives me more flexibility to do stuff that people had not planned on. This, however, does not run Linux. Typically, your, your embedded uh, network storage devices or your you know storage devices or whatever will run Linux or some other embedded operating system because there's not really any sort of licensing fees that are associated with that. And Thekus has developed a lot of custom extensions for Linux to try to make their storage systems a little bit more user-friendly. But Microsoft sort of noticing that Linux is taking over the world and basically everywhere except desktop operating systems has said, well, no, wait, let's, let's, let's not be so hasty there. Let's come up with a version of Windows that works on, on devices. And so they're letting various OEMs bundle Windows with different kinds of hardware. And so this is an example of that. This is the W5810. This is a version of Thekus's five drive network attached storage device that runs Windows Storage Server instead of Linux. And so Microsoft has made some concessions here. One, you don't have to have client access licenses with Windows Server, which is almost sacrilegious. It's like Windows Server not charging for client access licenses? That's, that's unheard of. That's crazy. But Microsoft expects people to buy these for very small offices, you know, offices typically 10 people or less, I would say. Although Thika says, you know, 1 to 50 employee businesses. But if you're running more than 10 people, you're going to get a real server. This would make a perfectly fine backup appliance, though. Uh, just not for your main server. Even if you're running Azure in the cloud, you, you don't want to do that. That's probably another conversation for another day. So the W5810 runs Windows Storage Server Essentials Edition 2012 R2. Basically, it's Windows Storage Server. There's a 60 gigabyte SSD that's built into this, and it's also got 4 gigabytes of RAM. It's powered by an Intel Celeron J1900. That's a quad-core 2.0 gigahertz CPU. Now, for me, because I'm a power user, I crack this thing open and I put another 4 gigabytes of RAM in it just because I'm a crazy person. But I did do some testing with it with 4 gigabytes, and it actually did run really well with 4 gigabytes. I think Microsoft has really... Uh, done an amazing job slimming down Windows to fit in 4 gigabytes. I mean, it's almost crazy that they've gotten Windows to fit reasonably in 4 gigabytes. Things do run a little bit better in 8 gigabytes, especially if you're going to install extensions to this. Now, I think in terms of extensions and cool stuff you can do, on the one side, because it's Windows, there's more cool stuff you can do. But on the other hand, because it's not Linux, there is less cool stuff that you can do. That said, it does have an HDMI and audio outport, so you can use it uh, you know, as a media server plugged directly into your television, but you can also still use it as a media server backend with front ends running, you know, something like Kodi, Raspberry Pi, ASRock B-Box that we looked at. Those things would still work fine as a media server front end for this as a file storage backend. Now, because it is Windows, all of your file systems are going to be based on NTFS, but this thing does actually support ReFS, which is Microsoft's new you know, data deduplication fancy thing. Really what most people don't know is that ReFS runs on top of NTFS and it's supposed to do data integrity things where it checks to see if a file is corrupted and some other stuff like we've talked about in our, you know, how RAID works and why RAID is the way that it is videos. And so what I'm saying is that the ReFS technology sort of goes a step beyond RAID where it's actually making sure that, you know, the physical hard drives are not lying about the data. It's doing some stuff to make sure that the stuff that it's reading back from the storage pool from the RAID array is actually what was written. And if not, it checks for the other data, the other redundant data in the array to see if it can reconstruct what it had actually written. It's sort of Microsoft's version of ZFS. If you've watched our videos on ZFS, then ReFS is sort of Microsoft's interpretation of looking at the problem that ZFS solves, saying, yes, you know, that's actually a real problem, and then sort of trying their own way to solve it. So ReFS is sort of new, sort of bleeding edge, um, but it's really interesting to see it in this in this device. And in terms of connectivity, it has three USB 3 ports, which means that you can use external hard drives or whatever with this device to actually back it up if it is your central storage solution and you don't want to back stuff up to the cloud. Now, one large benefit you get from this is SMB3. A full implementation of SMB3 on open source is not really a thing yet. And the big thing in terms of performance that's coming with SMB3 is multi-channel file sharing. Uh, this is necessary for high bandwidth devices like 10 gigabit Ethernet for a single workstation to be able to move files back and forth from a 10 gigabit workstation to a 10 gigabit server. 
Now this particular device only has dual 1 gig, which it can do teaming and load balancing with the dual 1 gig, which means that the fastest that you will ever be able to read information from this device is about 200 megabytes per second, give or take, taking into account protocol overhead and some other things, maybe a little bit faster than 200 megabytes per second, but rule of thumb, the fastest that you will ever be able to get from this is 200 megabytes per second. The bad news is that SMB3 is not really necessary until you're pushing more than about 350 megabytes per second. So when you're in 10 gigabit ethernet territory, something like this with 10 gigabit ethernet, which Thikus does actually offer in a higher end model, you would be able to run SMB3 and that would be the real draw of Windows storage server. I'm of the opinion that everybody in their household ought to have a server that all the members of the house can use for storage and backups and that kind of thing and it should just be a central appliance. That server should cache all of the movies and music and TV shows and everything that you could possibly want to watch and store and you know all of the pictures and home movies and everything that you've created should be stored on that server as a backup in addition to the individual computers of the individual members of the household. So it's like, hey I got a new computer, I just hit a button and restore all my stuff and it's, it's good to go basically. This device is very good for that. I think this device is, is also pretty good for small offices because it gives you an easy Windows interface for being able to manage your storage and do cool stuff with it, but also because it uh, integrates so tightly with Windows systems. If you're running, you know, an entirely Mac office or a combination of like Mac and Linux office, you should look at the N5810 Pro instead of this thing. The other thing that you'll want to do if you do get one of these is get a UPS. These things really need to be running on a battery backup all the time. And modern UPSs have a USB interface. It's plug and play. If you pick up an APC UPS, plug it in with USB to this thing. When you lose power, the APC UPS will gracefully shut down the W50A10 and it'll preserve your data. The other thing is that this thing has five drive bays. So you can run up to five drives with it. Now, as of this video, it has been tested and supports eight terabyte, three and a half inch hard drives. So you could get up to 40 terabytes of storage in here. However, I would recommend that for four terabytes and above, so we're talking four or five terabytes, six terabyte, eight terabyte hard drives, that you run two drives of redundancy. The reason for that is because those drives are so large and their interface speed is comparatively slow. Typically those disks operate at about 150 to 200 megabytes per second on an individual disk level. And so if you lose a disk reading in six or eight terabytes of information at only 150 to 200 megabytes per second, it's gonna take a very long time. Because of that, you could have a compounded disk failure. So for that reason, I recommend that you have at least two drives of redundancy in drive pools that are five or six drives if your data is important. If your data is not super important, then you can get away with one drive of redundancy. Just be sure that you use a USB 3 hard drive or something like that to make an extra redundant copy of the really important stuff. And you can thank me later. <laughs> I just don't want you to lose any information. It's a healthy paranoia. So I just happen to have three six terabyte Seagate drives. Let's go ahead and put these in here and see what happens. So let's talk for a second about off-label uses of this particular Thekis. Now I know what you're thinking. This would be a perfect box to install FreeNAS on or something like that so that you can get ZFS. Uh, no, because the platform doesn't support error correcting memory. You could not upgrade the memory to be error correcting memory on this because the processor doesn't support it, at least according to Intel Arc. Now you can upgrade this to 8 gigabytes of RAM and if you're going to run a lot of stuff on this, you totally should upgrade it to 8 gigabytes of RAM. If you ever have to send it in for service though, you have to take it apart and put the original Thekus RAM back in it um, so as not to void your warranty. Now, because it is Windows, you can install Windows stuff on it. I mean, I installed Open Broadcaster on it in order to be able to record and do some stuff as far as screen capture and things like that. So if you're thinking about getting one of these but you don't want Windows, well, get the 5810 Pro. The 5810 Pro runs Linux and has a built-in backup battery. This does not have a backup battery built in or even the option for one and it runs NTFS. I would recommend that you run ReFS in a mirroring configuration, but if you're running a parity configuration, you can still run ReFS and it will tell you about bit rot, although it won't be able to correct it. So if you're using this as your backup device, then that'll be great because you'll know about corruption and you can fix it yourself. But if this is your main storage medium, you'll still need to back this up onto a USB hard drive or something like that, which is great because this thing actually has a plurality of USB 3 ports. So you can use external USB 3 hard drives with it all you want, and that'll be fine basically for doing your, your extra backups of this. 
overall, I find the hardware to be very robust and satisfactory, even though it does run Windows. But hey, if Windows is your cup of tea, then this is not a bad piece of hardware. Although I would encourage you to check out the Linux versions as well. Um, this thing also has really good integration with Office 365 and the Azure-based cloud backups. Now, Azure is a service from Microsoft where it's pay for and they can run all of your stuff in the cloud. They can give you cloud computing, they can give you cloud SQL server, um, they can give you cloud Active Directory services for domain authentication and login that integrates with Office 365 for your hosted email and stuff like that. Those products are not bad products for what they are for Small Business America, you know, for a plumbing shop and typical, you know, small business, you know, blue collar, white collar America, which is what most businesses in America are and most businesses in the world are. It's not a completely horrible choice. It is, the downside is that it's the, you know, the whole service provider thing and, and that kind of thing. And Linux does that server stuff really well. But if you're running Windows on a lot of stuff, then Windows for your storage device may make a lot of sense to you. So that's been a quick look at the Thekus W5810, you know, sort of home network, small business network storage NAS. Now this one, of course, is running Windows Storage Server 2012, which integrates with Office 365 and Microsoft Azure. If you want something that runs open source in Linux, then I would suggest you take a look at the N5810 Pro. Uh, be sure to check the link in the description for our video on that as well. This one runs Windows, the other one runs Linux, that's the big difference. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.